Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky spoke to the British Parliament today about the global response to Russia's invasion of his country. Order, order. We are now meeting informally. As I informed the House earlier, given the exceptional and grave situation, I have agreed to a request from President Zelensky of the Ukraine to address members of this House about the situation in this country. That is why I have suspended the formal business of the House in order to hear the President's address. We have also been joined by the Ukraine Ambassador. Yeah. President Zelensky, we have watched the situation unfold in your country with increasing concern, but also with increasing admiration for the courage, the fortitude displayed by you and your fellow Ukrainians. Mr. President, you are welcome to address members of the House of Commons and the Lords. You now have the floor. President. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Uh, all the members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, I'm addressing all the people of the United Kingdom and all the people from the country with a big history. I am addressing you as a citizen, as a president of also a big country with a dream and big effort. I would like to tell you about the three days of about the 13 days of war, the war that we didn't start and we didn't want it. However, we have to conduct this war. We do not want to lose what we have, what is ours, our country, Ukraine, just the same way as you once didn't want to lose your country when Nazis started to fight your country. And you had to fight for Britain. Thirteen days of the struggle on day one, at four o'clock in the morning, we were attacked by cruise missiles. Everybody woke up, uh, people, children, the entire Ukraine, and since that we have not been sleeping. We have all been fighting uh, for our country with our army. On day two, we have been fighting airstrikes, and our heroic um, military servicemen on the island Zmini have been trying to fight. When Russian flag, uh, when Russian forces demanded that we lay down the arms. However, we did continue fighting, and, and we, did, we did feel our force, um, the force of our people that were opposed their occupants until, until the end. The next day, the artillery, artillery started fighting us. The, the, our army showed us who we are, and uh, we, we have been able to see who are people and who are beasts. 
Now, on day four, we started uh, getting people captive. We have not been torturing them. We remained humane even on day four of this terrible war. On day five, the terror against us was going on against children, against cities, and constant shelling had been taking place uh, around the country, including hospitals, and that didn't break us. And that gave us feeling of big truth on day six. The Russian um, rockets uh, fell on Babin Yar, that is the place where the Nazis killed uh, thousands of people during the Second World War. Uh, and uh, 80 years after, the Russian hit at them for the second time. And even um, churches are getting destroyed uh, by shelling. On day 8, we have seen Russian tanks uh, hitting uh, the atomic power station. And everybody got to understand that this is the terror against everyone. On day 9, there was a meeting of NATO Congress. Without the um, result that we were looking for, Yes, we did feel that. We did feel that. Um, we did feel that, unfortunately, that the alliances don't work properly always, and the no-fly zone cannot be enforced. And on day 10, the Ukrainians started protesting and mass stopping the um, armored vehicles with their own hands. And on day 11, the children and cities were being hit and hospitals as well with the rockets and uh, constant shelling. And uh, on that day we realized that Euro Ukrainians became heroes the entire cities, children, adults, and on day 12, the losses of Russian army exceeded 10,000 people killed, and also including the general, and that gave us hope that there will be some kind of uh, responsibility for those people of, uh, in front of the court. On day 13, in, in uh, the city of Mariupol that was attacked by the Russian force, a child was killed. They do not allow any food, any water, and people started panicking. I, I think everybody can hear that, that people do not have water over there. Over 13 days of this um, situation, over 50 children have been killed. These are the children that could have lived. But these people have taken them away from us. The United Kingdom, Ukraine, were not looking to have this fall. The Ukraine have not been looking to become uh, big, but they have become big over the days um, of this war. The, we are the country that are saving people despite um, uh, despite having to fight the one of the biggest uh, country, one of the biggest armies in the world, we have to fight the helicopters, rockets. Uh, the question for us now is to be or not to be. Oh no, this is Shakespearean question. For 13 days, this question. Uh, could have been asked, but now I can give you a definitive answer. It's definitely yes to be. Um, 
And I would like to remind you the words that the United Kingdom have already heard and which are important again. We will not give up and we will not lose. We will fight till the end at sea, in the air. We will continue fighting for our land, whatever the cost. We will fight in the forests, in the fields, on the shores, in the streets. I would like to add that we will fight uh, on, the, on the banks of different rivers like Dnipa, and we, will, we are looking for your help, for the help of the civilized countries. We are, we are thankful for this help, and we and I'm, I'm very grateful to you, Boris. Please increase the pressure of sanctions against this country, and please recognize this country as a terrorist state. And please make sure that our Ukrainian skies are safe. Please make sure that you do what needs to be done and what is stipulated by the greatness of your country. Best of all to Ukraine and uh, to the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the House of Commons, I want, I want to thank you for speaking to us and for giving us very clearly and powerful perspective of the tragic situation facing you and fellow Ukrainians. We have debated the situation in Ukraine numerous times in recent weeks, and I know that we will continue to do so, and that when we do so, your words will be resonating with us. I want to express the solidarity of the House of Commons with you, your compatriots, and we salute the courage of the people of Ukraine. Thank you, and our prayers are with you. Mr. Speaker. Just let me say. We will now resume with the formal sittings of the House. Order, order. I will take the points of order from the leaders of the main parties before we return to the opposition day. I call the Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. A point of order, with your permission, Mr Speaker. May I say that never before in all our centuries of our parliamentary democracy has the House listened to such an address. In a great European capital, now within range of Russian guns, President Volodymyr Zelensky is standing firm for democracy and for freedom. In his righteous defence, I believe he has moved the hearts of everybody in this House. At this moment, ordinary Ukrainians are defending their homes and their families against a brutal assault. And they are, by their actions, inspiring millions by their courage and their devotion. And I think today, one of the proudest boasts in the free world is Ya Ukrainets. I am a Ukrainian. So this is a moment for us to put our political differences aside, Mr Speaker. And I know I speak for the whole House when I say that Britain and our allies are determined to press on, to press on with supplying our Ukrainian friends with the weapons they need to defend their homeland as they deserve. To press on with tightening the economic vice around Vladimir Putin, and we will stop importing Russian oil, Mr. Speaker. And my right honourable friend, the Business Secretary, will update the House on that tomorrow. And we will employ every method that we can diplomatic, humanitarian, and economic, Mr. Speaker, until Vladimir Putin has failed in this disastrous venture and Ukraine is free once more. Yeah. 
Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Every one of us has been moved by the bravery, the resolve, and the leadership of President Zelensky. Invading troops march through his streets, shells rain down on his people, and assassins seek his life. No one would have blamed him for fleeing. But instead, he has stayed in Kyiv to lead the Ukrainian people and to fight. He's reminded us that our freedom and our democracy are invaluable. He's prompted the world into action where too often we've let Putin have his way. He's inspired the Ukrainian people to resist and frustrated the Russian war machine. He has shown his strength and we must show him and the Ukrainian people our commitment and our support. Labour stands for the unity at home and abroad that will isolate the Putin regime. Yeah. Labour stands for the toughest sanctions that will cripple the Russian state. Yeah. Labour stands for providing Ukraine with the arms it needs to fight off their invaders. Yeah. Labour stands with President Zelensky, with Ukraine, with democracy. Slava Ukraini. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. The SNP in Blackford. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, with your forbearance, if I can make a point of order. President Zelensky, we salute you. We stand with the people of Ukraine on the basis of the act of aggression, on the act of war of Putin. We must do all that we can to send support to Ukraine, to send the weapons that they need to defend themselves to make sure that we sanction the regime in Moscow, that we deliver the clearest message to President Putin, that this will end in failure for him, that he will face justice at the International Court. We must stand in this House, throughout these islands, throughout the Western world, in defence of democracy, in defence of sovereignty. Peace, justice, and the sovereignty of Ukraine must prevail. Let's make sure that we stand with our friends. We stand against those that have been bombed. We make sure that those that need our support, that need our sanctuary, will find a welcoming hand in these islands. Mr. President, we thank you. We salute you. Slavia, Ukraine. Ed Davey. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Hearing the words of President Zelensky should embolden us all. They serve as a reminder of all that we stand for, of all which so many Ukrainians are so bravely fighting for, a bravery exemplified by President Zelensky himself. That we should never take for granted our values of democracy, of freedom, and of our security. And though we in this House may disagree on many things, we stand together for those values, and together we stand together with the, the Ukrainian people. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, it is right that we strengthen our support for Ukraine with military aid, with toughest of sanctions. And it's in that support that we should also recognise the people of Ukraine and indeed President Zelensky. I'm sure the whole House would agree that President Zelensky should be granted one of our nation's highest honours, an honorary knighthood. And I look forward to the day when we welcome back to this House President Zelensky in person. Yeah. Yeah. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the point of order, uh, we uh, commend President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine, and we stand with them in this, uh, their time of strife. But our response will not be judged by the volume or strength of our applause for President Zelensky. It will be judged by the volume and strength of our response to his request for help, for practical military support and for humanitarian assistance for the people of Ukraine. We pray for their success. We dare not let them down. Yeah. Yeah. Can I also like to thank the staff and the contractors for making this happen? And when you leave the chamber, can you please hand in your headsets on the way out? <laughs> Where you got them from? I will now let the chamber clear. Thank you, everybody.
The House today is considering measures condemning threats of violence against historic